Good morning. This morning's scripture reading comes from Acts 5, verses 27 through 29. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. That's Acts 5, 27 through 29. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest questioned them, saying, We strictly charged you not to teach in this name, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. I always forget this. The whipper's not back there to yell at me. All right. I want you to know I brought up two Bibles today. I got a lot to say today. <laughs> Double swords. No, I'll tell you what's funny because Vincent, when he spends the night or in, in Felicity and they spend the night, and tell Vincent, it's time to go to bed. He said, but I got too much to say. <laughs> and I said, I wonder who he gets that from. <laughs> so, um, i got a lot to say today, but we'll, we'll keep it short. A couple things I just want to go over real quick in the beginning, and then we'll have a, a prayer, and then we'll get into the sermon. One, Alan will be here next week, uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Just to let you know, I've been talking to him on a weekly basis, and um, he sent an email very encouraging this week. He is to show you how media plays a role. He's been our website, looking at what's going on within the congregation. He got into and looked what we have out there as far as the, the spiritual plan, the five-year spiritual plan, looked at all that, and he gave us a compliment. He says, I love what y'all are doing. So that's very encouraging. So, it, But it's not what, what we're doing as an eldership, but what we're doing as a congregation. That's what is so enjoyable. And I want you to keep that in mind. So next week, he'll be here. Uh, remember just, and we'll do the survey immediately after that. Take, do the survey as him and him alone. And uh, uh, answer the questions regarding his presentation and everything. We'll, have a, we'll meet in here Sunday morning for class. Um, he'll teach the class. He'll do the sermon. And then we're going to have a potluck next door. Um, so make sure you bring food. And then we can fellowship with him, get to know him a little bit. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, him and his wife and his two children. So very exciting. Um, so the other thing I need you to do for me. Um, this morning we started starting class. And um, Amanda's... My daughter, Tristan's wife, uh, just found out her uh, cousin died this morning. So uh, it was hard news for her. They, they went ahead and went home. It's just, it's, it's emotional. And, and uh, so just keep them in your prayers, if you will. Uh, it's very important to me, you know. Because, uh, you, you know, when you see, see somebody in pain, it hurts too, you know. So just keep that in mind and pray for them. And if you can, reach out to them, send them a text because, you know, uh, anytime you lose someone's hard, but all of a sudden, it's even a little more difficult. So anyway, keep that in mind. Let's, um, before we get one more thing, then we'll go to God in prayer. I'll be sending out a Google Meets uh, for those that we didn't have a chance to meet with last Sunday or uh, Sunday and a half ago um, in regards to um, the different ministries that we have. So be looking forward to that. We'll have to uh, get you online, and we want to discuss our uh, engagement March 20th. So hopefully we get, we'll have everybody that way. I'm looking forward to it, so please put that on your calendar as well. Let's, uh, let's go to God in prayer. Oh, God, you are so good. You're so great. You're so awesome. Lord, we're so thankful that you know who we are. We're so thankful that you sent your Son. We're so thankful you sent the Spirit. And, Father, I pray that as we just take these few moments this morning to be able to celebrate your word and celebrate our life in you, that, Lord, we just, you open up our hearts, you pour in the love, and, and you know, the, everything that we have comes from you. I'm so thankful for that. God, we love you so much. Lord, and, and right now, I just pray that you be with Amanda as she has lost her cousin and, you know, the pain and suffering that's going, that she's going through. I pray that you give her the peace that only you can give. And, God, I love you so much. And, Father, just be with us this morning. It's through your son's name we pray in Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, this is the continuation of the previous two sermons. Two sermons I talked about even me, how God loves even me. The second one I talked about the redemptive power that we get within Jesus Christ, the resurrection power that we need to be excited about. And today, David sent me a, a text Wednesday. He said, what's your lesson on us? I have no idea. 
Because I, usually the first part of the week I'm studying for class, and, and uh, I said, so I'll get it to you as soon as I can. He sent me another text. Have you got any idea? I said, I'm getting closer. No. But then I finally sent it to him. I said, he's going to probably wonder, what in the world is this title? It's titled Holy Roar. Holy Roar. And I'm, I was like, I figured I'd get, he didn't, he took it and ran with it, did a great job leading singing this morning. I thought, well, he'll send me a text back saying, what is that? But he didn't, so I appreciate it. You thought about it. Well, I appreciate that, David. But you did a good job this morning. Holy roar, what does that mean? What does that entail? Well, I'm going to share with you this morning exactly what I have in mind and where we're going with this. Um, that one thing, a holy roar. You know, when you think of something, when I think of a roar, the animal I think about is a lion. Okay? And the other thing that comes to mind, I think about Daniel in the lion's den. You know, to be put down there in the lion's den for what your belief structure is, you're following God, and yet these bad things are happening. So what's going on? So, you know, and I think about those lions. Man, I, you know, walking into that, being dropped in that lion's den and looking down there and seeing them lions, I'm going, whoa. You know, I can imagine the sound that they had. And if you ever heard, you know, I haven't heard it in real life. I'd love to hear that someday, you know, at a safe distance. But, but the thing is, to imagine what that, what that roar, just the magnitude of the king of the jungle, to hear that roar. And, you know, I can imagine when the animals hear that roar and that sound, okay, there's something wrong here, I'm getting out of here. You know, to, to hear that. So I thought about this morning, you know, redemptive power of Christ, even me. So this is what I'm thinking about. Reaching out to heaven, our praise is poured out to God with a reckless abandon, our worship to God, and I'm holy, W-H-O-O, W-H-O-L-O-Y, yours, holy yours, my total being, but I am reaching out to God in a holy roar in celebration for what God has done for me, amen? That's exciting, and so to understand that even me, he loves even me, to understand he gave me the redemptive power, I just want to shout it from the mountaintops and say, thank you, God for what he's blessed me with. Oh, that is so exciting. And to be able to go out into the world and have people look at me and say, who is this person? This person is God's child. I mean, I want to shout it out even more. There's more excitement that we shouldn't even be able to be held down because of what God has blessed me with. Amen? We need to be excited about who we are. We need to be excited what we represent. And how we are cleansed and the redemptive power sent the Holy Spirit to us so that we can go before God boldly. Oh, is that exciting. Oh, I just love it. That's who we are. So a holy roar to God. God, thank you. You know, I try to imagine what it's going to be like on Judgment Day. The excitement that we'll be able to share with each other. The knowing that we're saved. Knowing we're walking through those pearly gates. Knowing we'll be able to be bowed down before the great creator. And to be able to share an eternity with him. Oh, it's so exciting. You know, and I look around, you know, we have, in this life we have ailments, we have issues, we have pain, we have suffering. All that's going to be gone. Amen? Oh, that's exciting. And that's where we need to be. And so I'm here this morning, just the next few moments, to share with you that excitement. Hopefully, you can tell I'm a little excited this morning. Just hopefully. Because this is, to me, when you open the Word of God, how can you not be excited for who we are? And I'm sorry. I'm, I, I need to apologize to the media team. For, I wonder, they go, we need to keep you in a box. It is so hard to be stationary because I'm so excited. So I do appreciate what they do and all the work they put in because I know they see me coming, they're like, oh my goodness. Um, Acts 5, 27 through 29. We're going to get back there and next, read the next couple of verses as we close. But one thing I think of, when I want to have a holy roar to God, when I just want to lift him up, I think of prayer and trust. Prayer and trust. Turn with me to Psalms 31 and 14. Psalms 31, verse 14. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. Simple words. I trust in you, O Lord, and you are my God. But when we make a statement, you are my God, 
It's way deeper than those words. When we make the statement, you are my God, I am saying, I am following you, God. I am trusting you, God. I'm giving my life to you, God. You are my God. And, you know, when you think about it, I can remember the times we'd be in church camp. I love church camp. Just be, you know, out in the woods. And we, we used to go to church camp in Colorado. I can remember it so vividly. And, you know, just being out there. And I can remember going away for just the quiet time and seeing the creation and the mountains and the trees and the animals and all those things. And, man, I'm like, you are my God. But then the creation is minimal because... He looks at me and says, you're my creation. And I can, guys, that's got to bring a smile on your face. He cares so much about me that not only I'm created, but he said, here's my son, Jesus, to cleanse you, to make you whole, to draw you to me so I can have you. And I'm like, oh, God, I am so unworthy. And you know, he says, yeah, I know you are. But I sent my son because now you are worthy. Oh, guys, that's excitement. And you know what? Everybody in this world needs to know that. We are the vessels that need to share that. We're the ones that need to proclaim it from the mountaintops. Man, I hope, it's, uh, this is, to me, this is like the pregame prep of a football game or a baseball. Man, I love motivating people. You don't get it. You just got to get out there and go. You know, it's just exciting. So this to me is a pregame uh, preps. So when we get done with this this morning, I want you to be excited. I want you to hit those doors going out there and say, who am I going to share the word of God with today? Is that not exciting? Man, we should be just ready and motivated to go because we come here for fellowship, to lift one another up, to praise God, to glorify him. But then we need to do his will. Outside those doors. Is it easy? No, it's not easy. But God has given us that power. Even me and the redemptive power. Turn with me to Isaiah. Let's turn to Isaiah. Let's read verses, uh, just verse 2, Isaiah chapter 12. Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2. Behold, I want you to think about this. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and I will not be afraid. For the Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. And you know, when I read that passage, what I envision is in the embodiment that God is everything to me. He's everything to me. You know, we can look back at our lives. There's times in lives that we struggle. We have issues. You know, uh, there's a period in my life when I didn't have a job. And it's like, what do I do? What happens? Man, I remember being on my knees in tears, Lord, God, what, what, what are you going to do? The thing I learned from that is this. And I can tell you this. God told me, you stand up. I will take care of you. And don't worry about it. That came to me loud and clear. It took me time to get to that point, but he wiped that stress out of my life. He says, I got you. Guys, when we go through troublesome times and we have issues, God is there. That salvation is there. That trust is there. We, God says, I got you. And man, when we understand that, he's got us in the way of salvation. He's got us in the way of cleansing. He's got us in the way of grace and mercy. He's got us in the way in love. And so all these things in life that we think are so huge are trivial when we put our trust in God. That's the journey of sanctification. That's the journey of being made holy. You see, when I was baptized, I started my journey of sanctification. As I progress and become holy because of God and draw close to him, that's the sanctification journey that I have, that each one of us has. You see, when I, when I was baptized, I didn't come up out of that grave. Oh, I've arrived. I'm done. I don't need to do anything. No, that's the beginning. And the beauty of it is you are cleansed. You are made new. You're a new creation. The trust and prayers that we have in God. One more passage. Turn with me to 2 Thessalonians. 
Let's go to 2 Thessalonians 1, and we'll start with verse 11. 2 Thessalonians 1, verse 11 and verse 12. See, when you change Bibles, it makes a difference, let me tell you. To this end, we always pray for you. I want you to think about this. We always pray for you that our God, think about this, that our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. The power in you, we, I want you to understand this, we, okay, I'm hearing voices. I want you to know, this is where kind of, if you want to say the rubber meets the road, we represent God. I don't care how you look at it, we represent God. So when you walk out those doors, when you're around people, for recreation, for work, for school. Do they know you represent God? Do they see God in you? Do they see the power of Christ in your life? Do they know you're a child of God? Do they know? And I can't answer that for you. Only you can. Because if they don't, You're not an ambassador of Christ. Very clear here. And what I love in the beginning of the passage, it says, uh, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling. Do you ever feel unworthy? I know I do at times. I feel unworthy. But we need to know that between prayer and trust in God in our daily lives and our sanctification journey, we are being made worthy. Not because of my merit, but because God has done for us. Worthy of his calling. By an example in the world. Two more points and the lesson will be yours. Turn with me to Romans 11.33. Romans 11.33. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. I want you to know, and I pray for this. I pray for the wisdom and guidance that God can give me. For decisions that, you know, whether, you know, we make uh, as an eldership decisions I make from my family withdrawn and myself and all those things. I pray for wisdom. I know I'm not the sharpest crayon in the box. But you know one thing I have? God leads me. God leads me. And so when I look at it, we need to be praying for wisdom. We need to be praying for discernment. We need to be praying for those things. Turn with me to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. We'll turn over there. James chapter 1 and verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. You know, when I think of somebody asking about wisdom, the first thing I go back to and think about is Solomon. When God asked Solomon, what do you want? He says, I need wisdom. And God said, that's a great decision. Because of that, you'll get riches. You'll get all these other things. But toward the end of his life, he lost that search for wisdom in God. We can't lose that. So I'm asking you, and I hope you pray for this every day, that God gives you that wisdom, that God grants you that knowledge, the discernment, the understanding of what we need to do. And reading this word of God, that's where wisdom comes from. That's where the Holy Spirit works in our lives. When we read the word of God and we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, there's discernment there. God gave us the Spirit to work in our lives. And a lot of times we want to deny the Spirit, but the only way we, a lot of times we deny the Spirit for work in our lives is because we don't do the will of God. We have our own agenda. And the Spirit doesn't work in our lives then because we think we're in control. Well, I'm going to tell you, I don't want to be in control. Every time I'm in control, have you ever noticed in your lives when you get in control, things don't go exactly how planned? You know? And God looks at me and says, he laughs and says, Brian, you still don't get it. You're an old dude now and you still don't get it, do you? You know? And I think about those things. So two things we've talked about so far. Last point. Call to pray and trust God. We need to employ wisdom. Ask for it continually. Last thing we need to talk about. This is a short point, but 
What's our responsibility? What's our responsibility? You know, this is the reason I brought this other Bible up here. Because this is a, this Bible is very special to me. It was given to me by uh, my youth minister back, oh, back in late 70s. And it, it goes back to the Greek, and it has the Greek and the English in it. And it shows it. And it, I've used this so many times. But it, it, it's very special to me. And um, I'm going to read a passage. Turn to me, Mark 16, 15, and 16. Because this is so important when we talk about responsibilities. The responsibility you as a Christian. You see, and we've called these things, it's also in Matthew and it's in Mark. I'm going to read Mark here in just a minute. The Great Commission is what we call it, you know, for better terminology. But the one thing we need to remember, this is not just for the apostles. You know, how are we to live our life? And I find this is interesting. Mark 16, 15, and 16. And I'm going to read this. I'm not going to read the Greek, but I'm going to read the translation of how the Greek is. It says, And he said to them, Going into the world, all proclaim ye the gospel to all the creation. Now, I want you to think about that. And he said to them, Going into the world, all proclaim, proclaim ye. Now, each one of us, we go into the world. And see, when you look at this, as we are going about our business in the world, we need to be proclaiming the Word of God. That's our responsibility. And you know, when I think about it, I'm like, what God has done for us and how He's blessed us, how He's cleansed us. <coughs> Excuse me. The Holy Word. I need to stand up from the mountaintops and just thank God. For where I'm at. Thank God for saving grace. Thank God for salvation. Thank God who I am and what he's made me. And man, if we can't get excited about that, how are we going to share the world with the world who we are? People need to look at you and say, man, why are you different? Are we? And you know, as we, as we talked about the, the five-year spiritual plan, our desire is getting more into the community, but it takes each one of us to get into the community and proclaim the Word of God. And the number one thing you can do is be that example. Let your actions speak who you are. Let your daily living speak who you are. Because that's driven by God. Does that make sense? Amen? I didn't put everybody asleep yet, have I? As we wrap up, I want you to think about this. You know, I, I love, like I said, I love listening to Christian music. Listen to it all the time. I've got a lot of different groups that I really enjoy. But there's one thing that, uh, talking about uh, scars of Christ, it talks about the scars in his hands and in his feet and in his side. And it's called, I'm thankful for those scars. I'm thankful that those scars were for me so that I can have salvation. And so, that is the thankfulness that we need to send up to God every single moment of our lives for those scars. But one thing, one of the verses in there says, when my, with my life, I will tell of who you are. Think about that. With my life, I will tell of who Christ is. That's the journey we're on. That's the sanctification journey we're on every day. When I walk down the street, show kindness. When I'm in traffic, show kindness. When I'm in upset situations, show Christ. That's our challenge. And I've really tried to, you know, and I will share this with you, I've shared it many times as we close, that, you know, in the past, you know, 30 years ago, man, I had a bad temper. I did. And it, it, it became Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde because I would get, and it derived from athletics. Because I'd step on that, whether it's soccer field, basketball court, it didn't matter. I changed. I came, became a different person. Because I would grow through people. It didn't matter what I did. I wanted to win. And what happened was, over time, you know, that, that temper would then trickle into my daily life. I'm like, this, this can't be good. And it wasn't. 
And I'm thankful for Dron because she helped me on this journey. But now I look back in the last few years, five years, ten, how it has changed me. God and the Spirit in my life has changed me. Okay? Because when I finally realized I had to surrender to God for him to do that in my life, that's what I had to do. Guys, and every one of us needs to be surrendering to God for how he leads our life because the Spirit will do that for you. You understand that? There's power in the Spirit. There's power. And we need to harness it and let God work in our lives. So when we're out wherever, let God work. Have that holy roar. Be excited. Be holy holy to God. W-H-O-L-L-Y. Be holy His and nothing else. And my challenge to you, as we get ready to sing, my challenge to you is be that example outside those doors. It's easy right here. I'm thankful for this this morning. Thankful for the fellowship. But be holy. God's outside those doors. The lesson's yours. If you need to put Christ on a baptism, man, don't wait. Be God's. Be sanctified. Be purified. Be cleansed. Be His today. And we'll celebrate with you. But if you strayed, look, man, we all have struggles. But that's where each one of us are here to help. Each one of us are here to pray with you for you, to assist you, whatever you need. Let's have that holy war to God as we stand and as we sing.